Good morning, and thank you for joining us live here at Rooted Bible Fellowship Church in the heart of Edgewood, Maryland, where our pastor is Pastor Kevin L. Webster and our First Lady Sharon Webster. We're so pleased that you would join us today in our worship experience, and let's hear a word from our pastor. Worship. We thank the Lord for our choirs. Amen. Let's give our choir a round of applause. Amen. The psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise will always be on my lips. And I will glory in the Lord. He goes on to say, let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Amen. And so we come to exalt the name of Jesus together. I'd like to good morning to you. Amen. On this Sunday morning, truly we give honor and praise to the King of Kings. This holiday season, We've been solely focused on the person who is the main reason for the season. If you've been journeying with us these last six weeks, we've been focusing on just one person. Amen. Because it's all about him and his name is Jesus. Is that all right? Amen. And so we want to get back into our series. We want to close our series today. Uh, we want to take a, a just a few minutes this morning to close out the series and let's go back into our holiday series entitled the true shepherd of life the true shepherd of life we've been talking about the revelation of Jesus amen that's what we've been talking about uh, we've been telling you uh, throughout this series that Jesus church I want you to grab this Jesus is all that you need let me say that again because it went over top of someone's head. Jesus is all that you mean, need, amen? Meaning that all you need to sustain you in this life and also in the life to come is Jesus. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. If you need peace, it's in him. If you need joy, it's in him. If anybody stands in need of deliverance, watch this. It's in him. If you need daily living stuff, it's in him. Healing is in Jesus. Amen. Power over sin in our lives, it's in him. Direction in life, watch this, it's in him. Purpose for life is in him. Jesus is the only one who can take a mess and turn it out and make it a miracle. Can I get a witness up in here? Oh, y'all ain't praying with me. Why? Because we got, we missing some of our members today. Amen. He's the only one that can take a mess and turn it into a miracle. You say, well, how you know that preacher? How do I know? Because I tried him for myself. Anybody else in the audience? He's able to take a mess and turn it into a miracle. And so we've been talking about him all month. Amen. We've been talking about him. And now we're at the end of coming to the end of chapter 10. Amen. And we're about three months when we get to chapter 10. At the end of chapter 10, we're about three months away from the cross. Amen. And in and, and John, the 10th chapter, that's where our series sermon text is. We've been exegeting. John the 10th chapter let me tell you something whenever you are studying the Bible all this allegory we need to pull straight from the text that's where you grow up in the things of the Lord John the 10th chapter is the closing up of the public ministry of Jesus amen it's the closing up amen and 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 John the writer he has introduced Jesus to us through his whole book he introduces Jesus as Savior. He introduces him as the I am. He introduces him, watch this, as God. He introduces Jesus as the Son of God. Amen. And as we look at this, the purpose of John's writing, the whole purpose, and I want you to get this as we close this series today. I want you to listen very closely. The purpose is that you may believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And that by believing, watch this, by believing that he is the son of God, watch this, this is the whole purpose of John, 
that you may have eternal life. It can't get no better than that. You can't get no better celebration than that. Amen. And so as we look at this, watch this. This type of preaching that we've been preaching is no longer popular in church. Nobody want to talk about Jesus any longer. We want to talk about how I can get my blessing and how I can get this and that. Let's talk about the one who brings the blessing. Let's talk about the one who brings the miracle. Amen. And, and folks, if, if folks don't want to hear about Jesus and he's no longer interesting to them, there's two things that's going on. If you don't want to hear about Jesus, either you're spiritually sick or you're spiritually dead. Because he is the centerpiece of all of our preaching. He's the centerpiece of all of our worship. He's the centerpiece of all of our praise. Jesus all by himself. Amen. All you need is Jesus. Amen. And so as we get back into this, let's do a quick recap. And we closed off last week. We was preaching and Jesus proclaimed, watch this, that he is the good shepherd. In John, the 10th chapter, he, he proclaims that he is the good shepherd. Matter of fact, he says in verse 14, he says, I am the good shepherd. And I know my sheep. And my sheep know me. That's great right there. That's theological, uh, deep truth right there. And, my, and they know me and I know them just as the Father knows me. And I know the Father, and watch this, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen and I must bring them also and they too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd and the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again and no one we didn't get to this last week no one takes my life amen no one takes it from me but I lay it down at my own accord and I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. And this command I received from my father. Amen. And we talked about the recap. We looked at the true shepherd and the sheep. And we said that Jesus has been identifying himself not only as the son of God. Amen. But, but he also has been identifying himself. And in the Pharisees and all the religious leaders are angry with him. They want to kill him because he's identifying himself not only as the son of God, but what he's letting the world know is, I am God. I am very God. Amen. And, and he's letting us know that he is God himself. Amen. And the religious sect couldn't accept it. They were enraged and they were plotting ways to kill him and stone him. Because they saw him as a blasphemer. Who is this man saying that he's God? Who is this man saying that he's the son of God? Amen. And Jesus stands and says, I am the good shepherd. And I'm the one who lays down my life. Nobody takes my life. Watch this. Roman soldiers don't take my life. No, I freely and willingly lay my life down. And then I willingly and freely take my life up again. Not only did the Father raise me, not only did the Holy Spirit raise me, but I also raised myself from the dead. That's powerful right there. He says, I got all authority. And that's the celebration of this holiday, amen? He says, I got all the authority, amen? And we've been looking at this, at Jesus being the true shepherd and we being his sheep, amen? Let me tell you something before we get into this and close out this series. Everybody in church is not his sheep. Oh, you ain't got to look at me crazy. Everybody in church is not his sheep. See, to be his sheep, watch this, you got to believe in who he is. And by believing who he, is, he, who he is, you're able to hear his voice. And when you're able to hear his voice, then you're able to do his will. Can I get a witness up in here? And so he says, my sheep, the sheep that belong to me, not because they wear nice suits, pretty hats, sing some good songs, but my sheep, they hear my voice. And watch this, and my sheep, watch this, I know them. I know my sheep. I know Pastor Webb. I know his downsetting and his uprising. I, I know that thing that plagues him. I, I know his, his, his sufficiencies and things that he struggled with. I know him. Why? Because he's my sheep. Let me ask you the question, are you his sheep? Then he knows you, Amen. And so as we close out this series, let's go and let's pick it up. 
Let's pick up and let's look at the absolute. And this is where the praise and shout of this holiday season is. I know we praise and shout because we got a, a, a diamond ring or a nice mink coat or maybe a new car with a bow on top or whatever, something underneath the Christmas tree. But I want the believer to shout over this fact right here. This is where the praise is. This is where I want you to get your happy feet. This is where I want you to get excited. This is where, I, this is where the devil can't mess with you this holiday season when you understand the absolute unfailing, unbreakable, non-changing security of the sheep. Once you understand that the Lord loves you with an everlasting love and nothing known or anything created can ever break that love, can ever separate you from God, that's where the celebration is. That he loved me so much in spite of myself that, watch this, he's able to keep me till the very end. He who has begun a good work in me even though I don't look like it, amen, and I don't look like what I've been through, but he's able to finish a work in me. I don't care what mama say. I don't care what daddy say. I don't care what my neighbor say. He who has begun a great work in me, he's going to perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. That's the excitement right here. And so as we come down, look at John, the 10th chapter, and look at what it says here as we read verses 22 to 30. Look what he says. He says here, then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's, Solomon's colonnade. And the Jews who were gathered around him kept saying, they're, they're dogging him, they're, they're chasing him, they're surrounding him. The religious leaders, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you did not believe. Here we go. The works I do in my father's name testify about me. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. And I know them and they follow me. And, and here we go. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can snatch them out of my father's hand. And I and the father are one. Let's close out this series today looking at the true shepherd of life. Amen. John, the seventh chapter, all the way up to the tenth chapter, verse 21. It's an uninterrupted series of events that Jesus, he, he, we talked about this. He, he, he healed the blind man. Amen. And in, in, in chapter five, he raises up a man with the infirmity, 38 years. And we see the progression and we see that the Pharisees are angry with Jesus. He's healing on the Sabbath. He's proclaiming to be God, the son of God. Amen. And, and all these events takes place between John, the seventh chapter, all the way down to John, the 10th chapter, verse 21. But now, church, here we go. It's autumn now. The autumn of the year. Now, now we begin verse 22. Two months have passed since verse 21. Two months have taken place. And now Jesus, watch this. It's, it's winter time, and we're in December now. Amen. In December. And Jesus is walking in the temple, in Solomon's porch, or Solomon's colonnades. Amen. Over there near the Gentile court. Amen. And, 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 and it's a time now of the feast of dedication. And Jesus now in December. Amen. That's around about this time. Amen. Right around this time, Jesus at the feast of dedication that we call Hanukkah. Amen. Now, let me tell you something so we can get our Bible straight and get our mind right. Hanukkah is not a Christmas celebration. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Hanukkah is not a Christmas celebration. It's a Jewish festival celebration. Because Hanukkah, watch this, commemorates the Inner Testament period. The account of 
the Maccabean time where, where now the solicitude empire has raised up and, and now has taken Israel into bondage, amen, has now came into Jerusalem and desecrated the temple in Jerusalem. And this cat by the name of Antiochus Epiphanes, he is a personification of the Antichrist that's on his way to come. He goes into the temple and he desecrates the temple, amen, by killing all the priests with, with pig's blood all in Jerusalem in the temple, amen. And now the Maccabeans, John Maccabean and his sons in the revolt of the Maccabeans, they'll now rise up. God always has an army. God always has a remnant. Stop looking about what you see and what you don't see. Recognize this. God's plan is always going to come to pass. God can never be defeated. He can never be beat down. He's always going to accomplish what he, uh, what he has put in purpose. And he raises up the Maccabeans and they go in and they fight against this empire and they go back in and they rededicate the temple. Amen. They rededicate and they cleanse the temple. Amen. Where, where the Jews worship, where the presence of the Lord was. Amen. And they, they cleanses it. Amen. And they light candles for eight days. They light the candles. And that's what Hanukkah is. Hanukkah is not a Christmas celebration. Hanukkah is a Jewish festival for the rededication of the temple. I had to get that out of the way. And Jesus is now wintertime, December. He's walking in the porches. And watch this. You got to see this. And the religious leaders are confronting him. They're dogging Jesus. Amen. And, and, and they're doing this trying to trap him trying to discredit him and Jesus before the people so that they, watch this, so that they could arrest him, so that they could, watch this, kill him. That was a whole plot. They're dogging him. Why? Because they're looking to arrest him before the people. Amen? And, and watch this. And the question is, is Jesus the Messiah or not? Amen? They're asking the question, is he the Messiah or not? And the reason that they're asking this is because they refuse to accept his claim. They refuse to accept his deity. They refuse to accept his messiahship. And the question was, was out of contempt. So you got folks that ask you questions not because they really want the answer. They ask you questions out of contempt. Amen. And they're asking him questions out of contempt, not because they're seeking him, but they're trying to trap him. They're trying to get him into a place that they could kill him. Amen. And Jesus tells him this. He says, I told you who I am. Amen. So you got to be careful. You can't play around with the things of God. He says, I told you who I am. And he says, but you don't believe. Amen. But you have enough evidence. You saw me. You saw when I, when, when I gave the blind man sight. You saw the man over by the poor Bethesda. You saw him with 38 years when he had the infirmity and I healed him. You saw all the miracles because the miracles testify of me. You heard John the Baptist, this great forerunner that proclaimed, here comes the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. You heard the testimony of John. You've heard all these things, and now you're asking me, am I the Messiah? You really don't want to answer. I come to realize that a lot of folks don't really want the answer. Amen? See, the eye-opener is what keeps people out of heaven, and Jesus is going to tell them this. The eye-opener is what keeps people out of heaven. Watch this. You've heard me say this before. It's not that you smoke dope. It's not that you lie. It's not that you cheat. No, no, that's, that's not what keeps you out of heaven. No, what keeps people out of heaven is unbelief. Unbelief keeps people out of heaven, amen? And their refusal to accept Jesus as very God, amen? And we got millions upon millions, church, upon millions of people, amen? Just like the religious leaders, amen? And, and, and watch this, they don't truly believe who Jesus is. They love church and they love to talk about him, but in their hearts, they really don't believe him. They don't believe that he's God. They don't believe that he's the son of God. They don't believe that he's the son of man. They don't believe in who he really is. Look what he says over here in John 5, 
19, he says, and Jesus gave them this answer. For truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing. Because he's now lining himself up with the father. Amen. Letting them know I'm the very nature. If, if you've seen the father, you've seen me. Amen. And watch this. He said, because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes. And he will show him even greater works than these so that you will be amazed. What Jesus is telling the Pharisees, y'all seem me at work, you've seen me, you've seen the ministry, you've seen my public ministry. And then he goes on to say this, watch this, he goes on to say this, he gives them the answer here. Jesus gives the universal reason for blindness and unbelief. He gives, watch this, Jesus tells them why they're blind. He tells them why they don't believe. Look what he says over in verse, verse 26, watch this. Look at this. He says this in verse 26 of chapter 10. He says this to him. He says, he says, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. That's why you don't believe. You're not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice and, they know, and I know them and they follow me. Watch this. Jesus gives the universal reason for blindness still in the world today. Blindness, unbelief comes from the fact that the folks just ain't his sheep. Watch this. The whole purpose of the gospel is that we must believe. We must believe. There's no eternal life. And please get this in your heart. There's no eternal life unless we believe. Amen. If you don't believe, there's no eternal life. You got to believe. And that's what Jesus is saying. He is saying here, right here, in, in John 8, 24, write it down. He says, I told you that you would die in your sins. This is what he says in John 8, 24. I told you that you would die in your sins. And if you do not believe. That's the word believe, church, that I am he. If you don't believe that I'm he, watch this, you will indeed die in your sins. And that's the message. That's the message, y'all. Watch this. The universal blindness and unbelief comes from the fact that they weren't his sheep. He's dealing with the Pharisees. Why? Because they did not believe in who he was. Amen. And watch this. The religionists, they could not believe. Jesus claimed to be who? To be God. Watch this. I'm going to tell you all day in the month of Sundays, Jesus is God. And I don't, I'm not ashamed to say it and, and I don't apologize. Jesus is God all by himself. Jesus is God and Jesus is the Messiah and Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. And I don't care who hears it. That's the truth. And if you don't believe that, Jesus says there's no life, there's no eternal life for you. There's no, watch this, there's no Christmas celebration for you. What in the world are you celebrating Christmas when you don't believe in who I am? What in the world is there a celebration of Christmas when you can't believe that the baby in the manger was virgin born and that baby was 100% God and 100% man? What you celebrating? Why are you bringing gifts? Why are you bringing gifts when you can't believe in who I am? What are you talking about? Some mistletoe and Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer and Frosty the snowman when you don't believe that I am the creator of heaven and earth, that all power is in my hand and I got power. I'm the one who's all-knowing. I'm the one who's all-powerful. I'm the one that's holding everything together. I am God and I'm God all by myself. I was God when I was in the manger. As a baby, I had all power in my hand. I veiled my glory. It was my prerogative so that I could clothe myself in flesh so that I could come into this low land of sorrow. In the world, are you talking about celebrating Christmas? Let me tell you right now only believers can celebrate Christmas. Only born again believers can lift up holy hands. See, we can celebrate when we ain't got two pennies to rub together because we recognize that Jesus is the reason of the season. Y'all better stop getting fooled by this world. The world don't believe. And Christians are so weak now. Falling prey to the world. Following the, the, the drum beat of the world. No, you got to believe, Jesus.
Jesus says. Anybody walk with me today? He says this, watch this. Jesus noticed this. Jesus didn't say, you're not my sheep because you don't believe. And watch the, the play on words. Jesus doesn't say, you're not my sheep because you don't believe. He says, you do not believe because you're not my sheep. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let me preach this to the Baptist church down the street, the apostolic church, the Pentecostal church down the street. Jesus says this. He says, you're not my sheep because you don't believe, but you're, you do not believe because you're not my sheep. You don't believe because you're not my sheep. You don't believe because, watch this, you don't belong to me. You don't believe because, guess what, I never knew you. You don't believe because you never touched the hem of my garment. You don't believe because you've never been blood washed by my blood. You don't believe because you have not partaken of my goodness. You don't believe because you don't believe. You're not my sheep. We're going somewhere today. Huh? A lot of activities going on today. The question is, are you his sheep? That's the question. Look what he says here real quick. Watch this. Did you get it? Amen. We need to be very careful to listen to the scriptures. We got to listen with our ears. Amen. And also with our hearts. To the very words from an almighty God. Watch this. Pastor Webb ain't making this stuff up. It's in the book. It's in the book. Amen. You got to believe. Amen. He tells these religious leaders, you don't, the reason you don't believe, he said, because you're not my sheep. So if you're not my sheep, you can't see me for who I am. If you're not my sheep. Here we go. Get this. Hear this, saints. You must believe. Here we go. You must and I must believe that the Bible is 100% without a shadow of a doubt. God's inspired. God's inerrant. God's infallible word. You got to believe. Watch this. That this ain't no white man's book. This ain't no black man's book. This ain't no Puerto Rican book. This is God's book. That God is the one who breathed on man and man wrote down exactly what God would have them to say. You got to believe that this is God's word and every word of God is pure. Add not to his word lest he be proved thee and thou be found a lie. You got to believe in this book. If you don't believe in this book, guess what? There's no eternal life. You got to believe. We got people getting twisted there. Well, I don't believe everything. You know, some of that stuff I don't believe. No, no. If you're a Christian, you better believe what God said. Huh? Look what he says here real quick. Look at 1 Thessalonians 2.13. And we also thank God continuously. Because, watch this, Thessalonians, they got saved. They came out of darkness, idolatry. Amen. Paul preached over in the book of Acts. They came out within three weeks, he preached. And this Thessalonican church, they were transformed. And he says, we also thank God continuously. Because when you received the word of God, what you heard from us, watch this, you accepted it. Not as a human word, but as it actually is the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe huh you gotta believe church you gotta believe in who Jesus is you gotta believe in your heart not just in your intellect not because you was raised up in church no no you gotta believe for yourself that he's got one thing about God he ain't got no grandchildren now now you don't get grandfathered in to this thing called the body of Christ you gotta believe for yourself he goes on to say in John 5, 24, very truly I tell you, whoever hears my voice or hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged but has crossed over. This is the, this is the exciting part. Has already crossed over from death to life. But if, you're going, I, I, if you don't get excited over that, something is, that means you ain't got a heartbeat. Huh? That we've already crossed over. I ain't got to wait to cross over. I've already crossed over from death into life. 
I'm no longer dead, but I've been quickened and made alive. That's excitement right there. Huh? Watch this. If you hear in your soul, you shall live. If you hear in your soul, you shall live. Here we go. Here we go. Watch this. To be numbered with the sheep, you must be able to hear and believe Christ's voice. Walk with me. Pay attention online. Pay attention. Don't go get no pastries or no coffee. Stay right where you are. Pay attention. You ain't in church, but at least online, stay right where you are. Being a part of God's church, watch this, doesn't automatically mean that you hear. Being a part of God's church doesn't automatically mean that you hear because you can be a religionist. You can be a member of a local church outwardly, but not be a part of the spiritual church inwardly. And Jesus shares a parable that speaks to this. Real quick, real quick. See, we're still in verses 26 all the way down. He says, the reason you Pharisees don't, 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 don't know who I am because you're not my sheep. See, my sheep know me. My sheep know me and they know my voice. Watch this. Jesus gives an example of four different types of soil that seed falls on. And the soil represents, watch this, the hearts. It speaks to the heart of all of mankind, amen? Different types of hearts, amen? And then the seed represents the word of God. Without the word of God, there's no life. There's no belief. You need the word of God, amen? Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Can I get a witness up in here? And notice this, notice what Jesus says in Matthew in the parable. He says, listen then to in parable, um, Matthew 13, verses 18 to 23. He said, listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, here we go, here's the first, the evil one comes and snatches away. So the message is given, amen? The evil one, the devil, he, he come and he snatch it away. Amen. It snatched away. Amen. And, and what was sown in their heart is no longer there. It was snatched away so fast. Amen. But here we go. But this is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground, a rocky ground heart, refers to someone who hears the word and at once, Lord have mercy, at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, since they have no root, since the seed just lays on the top, it don't germinate, it don't go down, it, it only lays on the top of the heart. They, they last only a short time. And soon as trouble comes, soon as things come their way, soon as the, as the enemy begins to smack them over their head a little bit, soon as persecution comes, because of the word, watch this, they quickly fall away. They're the ones walking around talking about, I used to be in church. I used to serve the Lord. Now, now, soon as trouble come. Huh? But then watch this. He says, and then the seed falling among the thorns. Refer to someone who hears the word. But the worries of this life, the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth chokes the word. You're more concerned about what you got and how you can keep it, and how you can get more, chokes the word. Amen? And, and watch this. It never germinates. So watch this. Because you so much worried about this world more than Jesus. But the seed falling on good soil. Ha, that should be somebody up in here. I know I'm going to raise my hand. I can't speak for nobody else. The seed that falls on good soil refers to someone who hears the word understands it by the power of the Holy Spirit, amen? This is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred or sixty, thirty times with his own. Over time, he says, of those other three seeds, the mother three seeds that represent the heart, or, or so that represent the heart, over time, the newness wears off. Enthusiasm disappears. The, the world becomes to offer more. Commitment is more to the world. Self becomes more important than an unseen Jesus. But the good soil takes the word of God. And once they receive the word of God, it finds its way down 
into their heart. And then it begins to do a supernatural work. It transforms them from the inside out. And what takes place on the inside now begins to show up on the outside. Now my hands are new. And my eyes are new. And, and my feet are new. Amen. And I got a new talk and a new walk and a new direction and a new purpose. I got a new song, a new direction, a new journey when the word of God finds its way in good soil. Can I get an amen? Listen, no matter what people profess, if they don't hear the word, the voice of Jesus by way of his word, then they're not simply, get away from this, uh, they're simply backslidden. Well, it's a possibility, but you got to make sure that they heard the word. You got to make sure you heard the word, amen? And, and, and watch this, it's a little deeper. See, sheep hear and are changed. When sheep hear the word, watch this, it happens. There's no such thing as sheep hearing the word and don't change. Sheep hear the word and are changed eternally. They're quickened and made alive. When sheep hear the word, they are regenerated. They become partakers of the divine nature. See, when sheep hear the word, there's something that's intrinsic that works in them and something that's forensic that also works in them. They got a brand new desire, a brand new want. They want to praise the Lord. They want to serve the Lord. They want to thank the Lord. They want to follow the Lord. They want to learn more about the Lord. They want to please the Lord. It's something intrinsic in and forensic that takes place ain't no way you can stay the same when you come in contact with the true and living God ain't no way you can be the same person you was when you come in contact with the true and living God ain't no way come here woman with the issue of blood <laughs> torn down all your life but but when you touch the hem of his garment <laughs> Something transformed you that it dried up the blood and healed your body and made you brand new. Come here. You can't stay the same. And so we see here, look what he says. He says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, we almost finished. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. Anybody walk with me today? This is Jesus talking here. He says, my sheep hear my voice. And not everyone, look at what he says in Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But here's the kicker. Watch this. Here's the kicker. But only the one who does the will of my father who's in heaven. Not just talking. Just don't talk me to death. We got a lot of folks like to talk. No, nah, no, nah, I don't need you to talk. What, 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 what are you doing? What, what, how's your life? How, how, what direction are you going? Amen? Not just talk, but an act of the will to do for him. I don't know about anybody else. Maybe I'm the only one up in here. But I don't know. When, when, when the Lord pulled me out of that ditch and out of that poverty and out of that blackness and out of that hole, and when he turned me around, I had my mind made up that I'm going to live for him. I, I didn't need nobody to jumpstart me or push me or pull me when he saved me I had my mind made up because I know what he brought me from do I got anybody in the house you know what he brought you out of you know what he did for you and I don't need nobody to tell me I'm going to serve him just because of who he is Don't miss this. We're not saved by doing, but we are saved by faith. But the manifestation of our faith, or the reality, I should say, the reality of our faith, watch this, is doing God's will. Huh? Yes, it is. Look what he says in Ephesians 2 8. Watch this. He said, God saves you by his grace when you believe. Here we go with that word believe again. When you believed. And, and, and you can't take credit for this. It is the gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things, but we have done so that none of us can boast about it. Amen? Now, now we love Ephesians 2. And we claim Ephesians 2, 8 and, 10, 8 and 9. We'll claim it. We'll say, 
I've been saved by grace. That not of myself. It's the gift of God. Not by works is the King James. Lest any man should boast. We, we all claim that. We love that. We'll, we'll throw that up. But why is it that we forget all about verse 10? We'll, we'll claim verse 8 and 9, but we forget that now, watch this, since he saved us, there should be an act of our faith that now shows up. And he says this, and he says in 10, for we are God's workmanship or God's masterpiece and he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do good works good things he planned it for us long ago he said if I saved you you should be living for me if I saved you watch this it's no longer about you it's about me if I saved you watch this you are my workmanship created in Christ Jesus watch this already ordained purpose to do good things for my name's sake. Can I get a witness up in here? So as we look at this, it boils down to this. It boils down to this. What Jesus was saying to them, the question is, do you follow him in life? Do you follow him? We don't become sheep by following. We follow Jesus because we are sheep. Let me say that again. We don't become sheep. You don't become a sheep because you by following no we follow Jesus because we are his sheep we are the sheep of his pasture amen and and and, and I just want to take a minute to thank Jesus you should never be ashamed over the fact that you his sheep you should never well, when you go to these Christmas parties you gonna do and families gonna come over don't you all of a sudden get ashamed because you his sheep matter of fact everybody in the house should know that you belong to the shepherd Everybody that comes this whole holiday should know that I belong to the shepherd, that I'm the sheep of his pasture. Don't you be ashamed. Don't you hide behind your status and your image. No, you better walk in your sheephood. Amen. Don't you never be ashamed. I told my grandson one day while I was coming down the road, I said, look, let me tell you something, grandson. Don't you never be ashamed of who you believe in. Don't you let nobody turn you away because you love Jesus, you name Jesus, you worship Jesus, you sing the gospel songs that promote the glory of it. Don't you never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it's the power unto salvation to those who believe, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. Let me close this out. One of the strongest statements Made by Jesus. We're coming down to the clove. Other than the statement he made on the cross where he said, it is finished. That's a powerful statement. It changed everything. Amen. But there's another powerful statement that he makes. Over in John 10, 28 and 29, look what he says here. He says, and I give them eternal life. That's powerful. We got folks, who even, you're not even looking forward to, it, to this eternal life. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. And my Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I gave them, I give them eternal life. Not a probationary life. Not a temporary life. I, watch this. He doesn't say I give them a rich and prosperous life. No, no. He doesn't say I give them a perfect life. He doesn't say I give them a carefree life with no issues, with no trials or tribulations. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say I give them a life that no sickness or disease will hit their body. He doesn't say that. Amen. But he says I give them eternal life. That's what he says. I give them eternal life. Amen. And look what he says. He says, I give him eternal life. Now watch this. He says this. He says that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Notice, I will give eternal life. He didn't say I will give them eternal life as long as they're faithful and do right. He didn't say that. He says, all who believe, I will give eternal life. Isn't that what he says? Four things real quick in that text. He lets us know real fast. He lets us know all believers all sheep, all believers are given by the Father to the Son. Amen. You and I were gifts from the Father, amen, to his only begotten Son. 
You a gift, amen? We are a gift from God the Father, and he says, here you go, son. Here, here is your sheep. You should get excited over that. You should get excited that he was thinking about you enough, loving you enough, that he's going to make you a gift. He's going to make you a gift even when you and I don't deserve to be a gift. Even when we don't act like a gift, he says, I'm going to make you a gift to my son. But not only that, secondly, Jesus is Jesus who gives eternal life. Amen? Life is in the son. He gives eternal life. And then thirdly, both God the father and God the son does something. They keep us secure. They keep us safe. They keep us in the palm of their hands. Amen. And then fourthly, and I want you to grab this as we come down. There is no power, no power that can defeat God's purpose for his sheep. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you touched yesterday. I don't care how you acted last week. Nothing, nothing can stop the power of God in your life. Nothing can ever remove you from his presence. Nothing can ever take you out of his hand. Nothing can snatch you away from him. Nothing can pull you away from his security. Isn't that some good news? Nothing in hell. Nothing on the earth, nothing in heaven, nothing, let's go a little deeper, nothing animated, nor anything inanimated, nothing created, nothing corporal, nothing incorporal, nothing can ever, ever take you away, snatch you away from the Lord who loves you, the one who saves you, the one who has redeemed you. The security of the sheep is always found in the ability of the shepherd. You think that the shepherd is dependent on the sheep? You don't know nothing about sheep. You think the shepherd is dependent on the sheep? He ain't dependent on no frail sheep. No, no. Sheep can't keep themselves. Can I get a witness? Sheep can't keep themselves saved. Sheep can't keep themselves holy. Sheep can't keep themselves blameless. Sheep can't keep themselves righteous. But God himself is able to do it. God is the only one who can keep us. Watch this. Look what he says. 1 Peter 1.5 And through and through your faith, God is protecting you. Hallelujah. By his power. Until you receive this salvation. Until your salvation becomes full, amen, when we see him, amen, we are saved, we're being saved, and one day we shall be saved. And when we see him, right, he says he's keeping your salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day, watch this, for all to see. He says, nothing's going to snatch you out of my hand, Webster. Yeah, I know you ain't all of that in a bag of chips at times, but nothing's going to snatch you out of my hand. And I know you don't always do what you should do, but nothing's going to snatch you out of my hand. Huh? And, and, and watch this. Not just, don't look at me, look at yourself. And I know, watch this, you're not where you should be, but nothing is ever going to pull you out of my hand. Huh? Why? Because you are the fingers to my hand. And you are so engrafted in me, you are so a part of me. Huh? He says that, right? He says nothing, nothing. He says when the love of God through the redeeming work of Christ enters a person's heart, he has such a love for himself in our heart. God pours, watch this. I want you to get this before we close it out. God does something with us. He did it with me. He did it with me back in 1988. Some of y'all, he did it back in 1960, 1970, 1990, 2000. It was 1988 for me. What God does, this is the awesomeness of God. When he saves you, he does something. God will pour his love down in your heart. Mm -mm. He'll pour his love in your heart. He pours his love of himself in your heart. You better walk with me today. He pours the love for himself. He pours the love for himself down in our hearts. That Watch this. That nobody who has God's love poured in their heart. Never want to separate from him. When God pours his love of himself in your heart, watch this. You never want to go without him. You never want to walk apart from him. 
you never want to be away from him when he pours the love of himself in your heart. The Bible says in Romans 5, 5, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that he has given us. Let me close it out. Good news. Nothing. Tell your neighbor nothing. Oh, we could do better than that. Tell your neighbor nothing. Can pluck or snatch us away from God. Now, I don't know about you. That's good news on this holiday season. Huh? Huh? He says, I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor the present, nor the future, nor any powers. Huh. That's some good stuff right there. And I know I got some demons on my trail. Anybody got some demons on your trail? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got them. You got them on your trail. You got them around your house. Amen. You got them all around on your job. Amen. Watch this. And nothing, that, neither angels nor demons nor the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation, even yourself, you created being. You, you can't even do it yourself. We'll be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isn't that something? Jesus closed, icing on the cake. He says, in verse 30, he says, why? Because I and the Father are one. Isn't that the icing as we close this series? The icing, the cherry on top, he says, the Father and I are one, meaning he expressed a union of equality. Not in person. No, God the Father's a person. God the Son's a person. God the Holy Spirit is a person. One God, three distinct persons, but he's not talking about in person. He's talking about in nature. He's talking about in deity. He's talking about in, watch this, in, in, in purpose. He's talking about in glory. He says, if you've seen the Father, then you've seen me. The Son is the image of the invisible God. He is the firstborn. He's the protocos. He's the firstborn from the dead. Huh? He says, if you see me, you've seen the Father. For in Christ, all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form. What Jesus is saying as he closed, watch this, I'm God. And I walked in this low land of sorrow. Watch this. One day when we get the glory, hold on to this truth. When we get the glory and we're on our way for those who know him, you ain't going to never see God the Father. You ain't going to never see God the Father. Matter of fact, God the Father's spirit. He encompasses all of the New Jerusalem. It says, watch this, that in the New Jerusalem, there's no need for the sun because the brightness of God the Father lights up the whole city. You better get excited over that. You will never see God the Father in glory. But there is a man in glory hung up on a tree died and three days later he came back with all power in his hands there is a man seated in glory seated at the right hand he has hands he has a head he has a body he is the mediator between God and man there is a man that we are gonna see over in glory aren't you glad about it can you give the lord a shout of praise about it hey we're gonna see him the lamb of god that takes away the sin of the world he is our true shepherd he is our great shepherd he is our good shepherd he is the shepherd of our soul somebody give the lord a shout of praise we going to see him in all of his glory. Come on, somebody. We're going to see him, and we're going to be just like him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to be just like you over there, over there at Hallelujah Boulevard. Amen Square. Give the Lord a shout of praise. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We're unworthy, but you loved us in spite of ourselves.
We don't cross every tear, dot every eye. But I'm so glad I'm your sheep. I'm so glad that you lead me by the still and quiet waters. I'm so glad that you take me down in the path of righteousness in your name's sake. I'm so glad, Lord, that you prepare a table in the midst of my enemies. Anybody glad about that? I'm so glad that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, no matter what's around me, no matter what I can't see, no matter what I can't touch, no matter what I can't believe, thou art with me, thou ride and thy staff you comfort me aren't you glad about it aren't you glad about it and i will and i shall dwell in the house of the lord always and forever and forever let me get about 10 folks that don't mind giving the lord a shout of praise thank you lord thank you for this holiday season thank you for coming into this world Thank you for going to the cross. Thank you for getting up on the third day with all power in your hands. Thank you, Lord, for being my savior, being my redeemer, being my comforter, being my bridge over troubled water. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey! Now to him, that's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory majesty dominion and power both now and forevermore be blessed be blessed Maybe one here today, you stand in need. Watch this. You must be born again. You must believe in the recesses of your heart that Jesus came into this world to die for sinners, to ransom us back to God, to pay a debt that you and I could not pay. That he paid our sin debt in full. You must ask him to come into your heart. To forgive you. You must repent. Lord I'm a sinner. And I stand in need of a savior. Lord save me right now. Forgive me right now. Deliver me right now. Then you say thank you Lord. Maybe there's one here today. Today is the day. Just raise that hand and say, Lord, save me right now. I thank you, Lord. Today you gave your life to Jesus. Lord, I give you my life. To get saved, you got to first be a beggar. You got to humble yourself. You can't be prideful to get saved. You can't be arrogant and get saved. You got to be broken to be saved. You got to be totally surrendered to be saved. And you got to call upon the name that's above every name. The name of Jesus. Is there one? Is there one online right now, right in your living room, right where you are? Wherever you are, if you're driving, pull off to the side and call on the name. The whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe that. I stand on that. Is there one? You say, I'm saved. But watch this. You're saved, but you need to be renewed. you saved, you need to fall back in love with the one who first loved you. You save and you need to turn it back and get back online with him. You need to put your hands back in his unchanging hand. Watch this. He never left you, but you kind of sidestepped him. You're not where you should be. You're not serving. You're not, you're not living for him like you could. But today you got your mind made up. I'm going to get back on the right track and I want to live for him. If there's anybody like that, I want you to come up to the front so we can have an altar prayer. Because watch this. The Bible says we should pray without ceasing. And it's a time of repentance. Anybody that needs prayer, come up to the front. Let the Lord touch you. Let him give you a front. 
Thank you for joining us in service today. And as always, you can visit us on our website at www.rbfchurch.com, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hope you have a safe and prosperous week.